objects are worldwide in their distribution. Obviously, we have some, a lot of uh, specimens from around uh, the UK, but also from elsewhere in the world. The natural world, it's, it knows no political boundaries. So in order to study it and understand it, uh, you do have to look at animals from everywhere uh, because they're all interlinked in some way or other. The Natural History Collection is divided up into um, five sections. So we have Earth Systems, which obviously looks at geology, the geological processes of the Earth. Uh, we have Paleobiology, looking at fossils. Uh, we have Invertebrate Biology, which looks at most of the animals without backbone. We have a separate group, the Entomologists, people who look after the insects. And then, finally, vertebrate biology, the animals with backbones, animals like ourselves. As a paleontologist, obviously, the fossils are the highlights for me. But I should say that that is one of the strengths. We probably have one of the, the world's best collection of fossil fishes, if not the world's best collection of fossil fishes. It's very important for the natural uh, history collections to be continually adding because one of the things it gives us is change over time. If you look back at uh, uh, maybe where insects were collected uh, in one particular spot, say in Scotland, 100 years ago, and we go back now and continue to collect, we can see how things have uh, changed over that time. So we can start to understand maybe climate change, environmental change. And so we continually collect and add to the collection. As soon as you stop, then the, the value of it uh, deteriorates. <laughs>